I am so thrilled to be here. We're going to talk about words today. Every thought that you think and every word that you speak, it creates your future. We're going to talk about a word today that I believe has the power to change the world for the better. And we'll dig down into that word. Do words have power? They have incredible power. Listen to these words uttered in 1961. If words in 1961, if those words uttered by JFK can take a man and later a woman to the moon and back, what can words do for us in our life? We create thoughts with words. Words create our actions and our results. Emerson said that the ancestor of every action, it's a thought, of every action, is a thought. So let me take you back seven years ago on my journey when I discovered the secret word, which will be the focus of my message today. I'm in Vienna, Austria. I'm looking at the lights in Vienna around the holidays. I'm with Viktor Frankl's family. Viktor wrote Man's Search for Meaning, one of the 10 greatest, most influential books ever written. And he said these words, what is to give life? must endure burning. And he knew what those words meant because he lost everything. I've stood in the hamlet where the Nazis came in the dark silence of the night. They took Victor, they took his unborn child, his new bride Tilly, his mother, his father, his sister, and they herded them into cattle cars. And he lost everything. They even tore up his manuscript. His father died in his arms. They said, you'll no longer be called Victor. Great You're work. prisoner number 119-104. 119 104 And the man who became a number became a person. You will often discover your gifts, your purpose, your path in your darkest hour. Is that true? The second most highlighted section of my book, Aspire, are these words by Victor. You can take anything away from a man but the last of the human freedoms, the ability to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, the ability to choose one's own way. I remember presenting a copy of my book to Victor's grandson, Alexander. He turned it to page 12, and it said, a victor, not a victim. And he said, did you write that about my grandfather? And I said, I did. It was one of the most rewarding moments of my life. That's why I was in Vienna. This night, I retraced the steps from the gymnasium, the high school, the home, the flat, the clinic, where Victor had written 32 books. He was the third great Viennese psychotherapist, and he really changed psychotherapy. Logotherapy means to connect to your meaning, right? A logo means meaning. When you find meaning in life, the whole world opens up. That night, I was looking for meaning in my life, and I walked back into the St. Stephen's Cathedral, right in the center of Vienna. Anybody ever been there? A couple of you have been there. This is Mother Teresa's mentor, the original Mother Teresa, who said, do little things with great love. The original Nike slogan, they stole it from her. That slogan. And then I walked out after paying homage for about a half an hour. I'd been there my first night. This was my seventh night. I walked out 
walked 50 cobbled steps into this contemporary store. I looked through the oval windows. It looked like a jewelry store. There were fabrics and linens from all over the world, from India. I had a daughter, Susan, getting married. There were linens and silks, just incredible. You can't even, this doesn't even do it justice. But then I met the proprietor of the shop, Praveen Chirkori, a world-renowned artist. His paintings sell for tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of dollars. And he saw a little pin, the Statue of Responsibility, why I had gone there, hanging around my neck. And he said, you do, Victor Frankl. You must be one of the greats. And then he reached behind the desk in the front, and he produced a book. But he told me a word. How many of you know that word? The word is gen shy. It means you should never treat another person in a manner that would make them feel small. Now, before he told me that word, he opened this book. There was a book. It was about that high and about that wide. And guess what? I have that book here today. It's right here. That is the book of greats. We brought it in from Vienna. We want every one of you here to sign the book of greats and to have the experience that I had seven years ago. Now, when Praveen reached behind the counter and pulled out that very book, I didn't feel Gandhi-ish. I didn't feel Mother Teresa-ish. If you look at this, you open it up. On the left-hand side, this is a video, but it's right here. This is the book. There are royalty from India. That is Ray Charles. You see it right there? Ray Charles' signature on the left-hand side. Gandhi's son and daughter had signed the book, and there was Viktor Frankl's signature, the man I'd gone to see and learn from, and he opened the book, and he said, Kevin, you must be one of the greats. Will you sign my book of greats? Again, I didn't feel Gandhi-ish, Frankl-ish, Mother Teresa-ish that night. And I said, I'm sorry, Praveen, I'm honored, but I can't sign that book. And he grabbed my elbow, walked me to a restaurant, and he taught me that word. That Genshai means you would never treat another person in a manner that would make them feel small. He even pulled out a coin. I remember it as if it were yesterday. Two strangers having a conversation as if we'd known each other forever. He said, Kevin, I'm from the East. You're from the West. I'm dark-skinned. You're light-skinned. What do you believe about me? And the words of my mother came to me, and I said, well, I believe you're my brother. We were created by the same creator. And that beautiful smile that he has, he just lit up the room, and he said, that's what I believe also. And I had a journal with me. You always carry two books with you, the book that you're reading and the book that you're writing. So always carry a spire with you wherever you go for the rest of your life, <laughs> or any great book, and then carry your journal. If I didn't have a journal that night, I wouldn't have recorded this. I still remember, he sat next to me and he pulled out of his pocket a coin. This is again Chai coin that we've now made up, but he pulled out a coin about the size of a half dollar and he knelt down beside me and he said, if I were to pass a beggar in the streets of Calcutta, he grew up in Calcutta, one of the poorest cities in the world. Many of you have been there. And if I were to pass a beggar in the street and just pass, casually toss them a coin, I would not be practicing Genchai, but if I got on my knees and I looked that beggar in the eyes, and we're all beggars at times, are we not? And then I placed that coin in their hand. He said, that coin became love. It wasn't just a coin, it was love. And I remember experiencing this and saying, wow, is this really happening? Who is this man? who's appeared on my path. And I will say one other thing. When you get on path and on purpose, 
And it's as simple as this purpose comes from propose. When you propose what it is that you will do with your unique God-given gifts and then act on it, that's the moment you get on path and on purpose. And when you do, is this true? People will appear on your path who've been waiting for you. All along, there he was, right across the table. Well, I didn't sign the book that night. The store was closed by the time we finished a five-hour Chinese dinner in the middle of Vienna, all that schnitzel, and we're hungry after we're done. <laughs> he went left back to his flat. I turned right, and he made a statement for me. He said, Kevin, you're one of the greats. Every person in this room, every person watching this around the world is one of the greats. We're an unrepeatable miracle. You didn't sign my book of greats. Promise me. Promise me you'll never, ever treat yourself small again. I went back five years later, and I signed the book of greats. Where do you think I signed the book of greats? Where? I wanted a blank page. You know, that sounded kind of good. We went back. And he opened up the book, and we'll pass it around, and you'll have a chance to sign it in the back here, every one of you. You'll be one of the only few. I have this until the end of the month. And he had me sign it right there, right below Victor Frankl's name. And I said, how about a blank page, Praveen? And he said, Genshai, Kevin, Genshai, <laughs> with his beautiful smile and demeanor. He was trying to teach me something that I want to teach you as we finish here. We don't see the world as it is. We see the world as we see ourselves. And the way we see ourselves reflects in the way that we treat others. And we can go on a path. <laughs> oh, I set it on top of my remote. <laughs> you know, it's meant to be. <laughs> Woo! Had its own mind. <laughs> <clears throat> if you ever feel inferior to someone in a certain setting, and I did, right? Here, sign right below Viktor Frankl. If you ever feel inferior to someone in a certain setting, you'll likely feel superior to somebody else in a totally different setting. And we're all, we're all the same, aren't we? We're all equal. We're in this together. We're doing the best that we can. Genshai says, I am enough. And when you decide that you're enough, the world opens up magically, Praveen would say. Earl Nightingale, in a classic, in Lead the Field, he had a magic word. And he described a magic word. This is the secret word. And he said, here's the secret behind attitude. For some strange reason, we underestimate the things that we're capable of doing. And for some equally strange reason, we believe that other people can do things that we cannot do. But Genshai says, I have a unique set of gifts. I use five affirmations. The affirmations are, I am worthy. I have divine worth. In a forest of 100,000 trees, no true leaves are alike. I'm worthy, too. I am capable. I have a unique set of God-given gifts, my namaste. And when I open those gifts, I honor the giver of those gifts. When you do that and you quit focusing on you and who you're going to serve with your gifts, your whole world changes. Three, I am grateful. Grateful comes from grace. Grace means divine gift. When I'm grateful, I have a divine gift every day. It's a 24-hour check. What will I do with my gifts? Because they're not about you. They're about those you serve with your gifts. Your purpose isn't about you. It's what you propose to do with those gifts. For I forgive myself and others. And the fifth most powerful affirmation is I trust myself. I trust myself. You couldn't have an aspiration or a dream if you weren't capable of achieving it, if it links to your unique God-given gifts. As I conclude, I think of the words of Thomas Edison. I think of the essence of Genshin. I think of never living 
small again. To make a commitment right here, right now, that you will never play small again in your life. And here are the words from Thomas Alva Edison. If we did all of the things that we are each capable of doing, we would literally astound ourselves. In the true essence of Genshai, it's time that every person in this room start astounding. Thank you so much. It's been a privilege to be here.